But depression is caused by a lack of optionality and anxiety is caused by an overabundance of optionality. Clearly, most people are actually more anxious than they are depressed because there's just too many options. They're standing at the base of a mountain and they see 30 different paths to go up the mountain and they don't know which one they should pick. So therefore they pick none and they sit on the bench and they wait. The best way to overcome anxiety is clarity. And you don't have clarity unless you create your vision. The vision is what dictates everything. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Tribe of Millionaires podcast. I'm your host, Jamie Gruber, where it's my job to interview the top talent in the world and extract life lessons and peak performance tips. And we got one big one today, man, Brian Lubin. Brian Lubin is the founder of Action Academy. He's an investor. He is an entrepreneur. He's a world traveler. In fact, he's coming in from Zurich today. Uh, and he is the host of a very, very popular podcast called Action Academy. Many of you have probably heard it. Brian, brother, take three. Welcome. Dude, it's been a year. We've been doing this. This interview has been a year in the making, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, five-star rating and review for Tribe of Millionaires. Yeah, right, right. Here's the, here's the backside. Here's the downside of podcasting. We recorded a year ago. File was corrupted. We recorded again a couple months ago. And audio. It was in a new platform. Audio goes. And, and now, like you said, though, it was meant to be now. Yep. Whenever something, <laughs> it's life happens for us, not to us. And whenever something over and over and over again in my life, it's just, it's just whenever something happens and something gets delayed, especially something that you're excited about, I always find it to be true that whenever it does happen, that's when it was supposed to happen. So just true. go with the flow, baby. Go with the and flow. And here we are today. Here we are. Let's dive in. I want to geek out on podcasting for a little bit because I love the topic and then we'll go, we'll flow from there. That's right. For you, you've grown, I can't think you're over like 60,000 per month, maybe more now, uh, downloads, listeners, whatever you want to call it per month. What is the, what's the, what are the one or two principles, concepts, hacks, tactics, whatever it might be, anything from, from big concepts to small, small little hints that you think have contributed most to your growth? Yeah. So I'll say telescope and microscope, right? So I would say, well, first consistency. And just like, it, it's the same thing that's applicable to any entrepreneurial journey or any business, you know, conversation. It's just consistency, man. It's like every single day I'm doing a podcast episode. And there was a day and like, I just got this tattoo on my thigh um, in Rome, Italy. It's of the that. Coliseum and it's got in Italian. It's like, it is not the critic who counts because I've been obsessed lately about this whole man in the arena quote by Theodore mm -hmm. Roosevelt. And I, I'm talking about, you know, being in the arena and people ask all the time, how do I find friends? How do I find partners? How do I find mentors? And I'm like the only, and I was trying to think about how to answer that because I'm writing a book. And then finally the answer came to me because I was trying to think, is there a framework? Is there a formula? Like, how can I develop, how can I like clarify likability into a sentence? Like, how do you be likable? And I was like, you have to be in the arena. You have to get into the arena. Because if you're if you're fighting in that arena, then other people that are fighting in the arena will see you and recognize you and say, that guy gets it, that girl gets it. And then people that have been in the arena that are like now the politicians out in the stands because they fought the they they fought the fight and now they don't have to be, you know, swinging the sword anymore. They're like, I remember what that was like. So for me, it's just being in the trenches every single day, constantly searching for the best guests to come on the show, constantly researching the guests constantly like doing whatever I can, no matter what time zone it is to go out of my way to make sure a podcast goes out. Um, Monday, I was about to not have a podcast out because uh, Switzerland has their own power adapters. And all oh, weekend, man. I was in this very remote part of the Swiss Alps where they didn't have any stores open. They didn't, I didn't have my car there. You have to take a, a train to get up there. And my phone was dead. My computer was dead. I had my battery pack was dead. I had nothing left. And I was just like, okay, cool. And, Show's not going out. And I said, no, fuck that. I got up at 5 a.m., got in a freaking train, went down, got my rental car, drove to four different towns, finally found a power adapter, went to a cafe in interlocking, got the podcast out, done, recorded in the cafe, done, out, posted it, right in time. So it's just like that. So like consistency is one. So yeah. if you're starting a podcast, if you're starting a business, if you're starting anything, just go ahead and commit. If you're not going to commit to doing it for two years, don't do it. That's not worth doing. Point. Yeah. It's not worth yeah. doing. So then that's one point. And then another point is just really sharing. I have found content wise, sharing the principles is much better than sharing the message itself. 
Let me think of how to clarify what that. What do you mean that? Yeah, of sharing the principles is easier, so, better than sharing the message. So how many podcasts are out there that have the same podcast style reels? Tons. You know, tons, very saturated. And so instead I took a pivot and instead of, I was just noticing because I was doing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these paying thousands of dollars. And I realized that none of them were popping. There's no mm -hmm. virality there, no reach. And so I was like, well, what if I just talk about my journey, my story, me as the host, and I just wrap the principles of the podcast episode into that clip, into that video, into that story. So now it's like, I'm sharing my story and then at the end is my call to action. I'm like, hey, by the way, if you guys are interested in quitting your job to, like through real estate and business acquisition, give me a follow and go click the link in my bio for my podcast. Yeah. Now, hundreds of people, brand new people, every single week are checking out the podcast through that because I can achieve virality through my own personal story. I hope that answered the question. It does. Give me, give me a little more specifics on it. So like set up that reel, set up that short, set up that TikTok. What does that look like when you're doing that? Is it, cause I've seen you do a lot of, uh, I, I told you, I texted you, man, like Chris Williamson, Stephen Bartlett, Lex Friedman, you like, that's who I'm mm -hmm. studying. That's who I'm watching and saying, all right, these are the kinds of guys that are, that are steps ahead, doing some really cool stuff. You've grown your brand significantly. And I'm, I'm watching, I'm going to copy whatever I fucking success leaves clues, right? I'm going to steal and mm -hmm. not like literally, but you know what I mean? Like if I see the tactics that are working, I want to copy that. I want to, I want to copy those that are successful. So when, what I see you doing is a lot of like remixes. So it'll be a yeah. quick snippet of a, of a video um, that's on brand on topic. And then you pop, pop in and your gift man is like, you're, you're witty, you're quick. And then you keep a consistent message throughout. Is that what I'm seeing? Is that what you're talking about? Or, or maybe it's something a little different? No, that's that's completely correct. So what I stopped doing was trying to sell the, the plane ride within the short. And I, I started utilizing short form content for what it actually is meant for. And that's to educate or entertain, right? Mm. So like, we'll talk about a lot more in this podcast than just media strategy, but this is a fantastic point to start at because it could be applied in anybody's business through marketing. It's just marketing and sales, right? So lead flow. Um, so you're not supposed to sell the message through your short form. Your message is delivered through your long form. So your podcast or YouTube, right. like right. that's where you convert customers. That's where you get your loyal fans. That's where you get interaction engagement. That's where you build relationship rapport with the, the listener, with the audience It's through an hour long interview like this. Mm. Like, am I going to teach somebody to invest in real estate or to build a business or to buy a business through a 60 second TikTok or a 60 second reel? No. What I need to do is sell them on the freaking idea of it and then direct them towards the additional resource. So instead of saying, hey, here's the top five ways I analyze rental properties through my short form, I was like, what's the actual problem and what's the actual point A and point B that we're taking people to and from? And right. So yeah, I was like, yeah. people want to leave their jobs and get to this end destination. So my end destination for a lot of people, because I'm selling to myself four years ago, was this person's in a corporate job. They hate it for this reason, this reason, this reason, this reason. And yeah. they want to get to this destination where they can do what they want, when they want, with who they want, work on what they want, build their own business, travel around the world, and not have to worry about money. So like, let's sell Hawaii as the destination. And let's say, hey, here's where I started. Here's where I ended up. If you're interested about the in-between, 400 hours of podcast right here. That's awesome. Does that That's make clear. sense? Did, that, 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 did that, I clarify that? Very, very clear. Very, very clear. So it's too many people are too granular with the content and they're saying, yeah. hey, here's the six step uh, analytical framework that I use to analyze a mobile home park. How No one's going to analyze a mobile home park from your TikTok. But if you say, hey, here's why I buy mobile home parks. Can you believe you can make money from mobile yeah. home parks? I was working this job as a big four like accountant and I started buying mobile home parks and now I can like do this from the beach or I can do pick up my kids from school. Like, oh my God, if you want to learn more about this, go check out my YouTube. I did a two hour video on this. Yeah. Then they go to your YouTube. That's where you bam, done. That's so, great. so, and then when it comes to the actual content formation, um, it's very simple. And then we'll move on because this isn't a marketing podcast. Sorry, guys. No, I, I this, is, this is, this is, this, this, this episode. So is, it, yeah. This is your specialty, in the, man. In the role of my business, I'm, I'm Brian Lubin. I work for Brian Lubin. So I took that from Andy Frazella. So I am the sales and marketing director for Brian Lubin. Mm. So this is the hat that I wear in my business as the visionary. Like this is the seat that I sit in. Like this is my chair. Um, so for me, uh, a piece of content has three pieces and it's same over and over and over again, which makes it very easy to create content at scale. It's not difficult for me. And also I don't spend thousands of dollars doing this. My videos aren't mass produced and highly produced. Right. Uh, they're not produced at all. They're in the gym, like, or in the car, 
in my tank top, like filming content. It's the quality of the content itself, not the mm. production quality. Yep. People are sick of like the Hormozy style because it's so oversaturated. They just want to see you walking and sharing your story. Agreed. So what I do is I steal other people's hooks. So there's sure. three parts to a video. There's the hook, there's the body, and there's the call to action. So the hook, um, instead of trying to find the best ways like Mr. Beast does to create this two second hook that's going to capture the attention of millions of people, why would I spend my time doing that? Instead, I go through and I find uh, the topic that I'm searching for in TikTok because it has SEO now and I'll search you know, millionaire tips or financial freedom, or I hate my job or something like that, where it's designating the problem or the destination. And then I'll find a video that has already millions of views. So that, that two second clip obviously gets people's attention. And then I just put my body and my story and my message on the back end of it. So I get their attention I already know it's going to get it. And then I keep it through my message. And then the same CTA over and over again, call to action. If you like this content, give me a follow, check the link in my bio for my podcast. And then now we've we've built that into, you know, 75,000 downloads a month. Uh, we've built that from zero to like 400,000 audience on social. And now yeah. this is going to be about a million dollar ARR business in its first year of inception, um, all based off of making these stupid videos. So eh, work. I love it. The cuts that you have on the body part, are those just turn on, turn off camera or are you editing that? I don't edit it. I just film it. It, it's just in short, short spurts. The jumps, um, like, yeah. Yeah, if you do it all at the same time, then it's just um, like people don't like that as much. So like yeah. Mr. B, just watch whatever Mr. Beast yeah. does. It's like angles different. Like that's what keeps people's attention. Yeah, it's so, like watching I mean, a baseball and, game. Yeah, you ever watch a baseball? Yeah. Like remember the first time my wife went to a baseball game with me after having watched it on TV, which is hard to make interesting to begin with. But live, it's like, oh, wait a minute. There's no other POVs here. Like you're just sitting in one spot watching everything that's happening. It's boring. But if you watch it on TV, it's like in between pitches there, this person in yeah. the crowd, this outfielder standing there chewing something, then back here, then it's down the, you know, like from the pitcher's point of view, then it's from the catcher's point of view. And they zoom in on the umpire. Like it's constantly moving to keep the eyes, you know, to yeah. keep the attention on it. it. Right. That's kind of the base level of what, what content creation is about. Only we have to do it in two to three second clips now because of even less sometimes because of the the attention span that we have nowadays. Yeah. And if we zoom out to the actual problem, you know, I wouldn't even say like the act, the how was the actual problem. It's like the why. And people have this imposter syndrome. I know exactly who listens to this podcast. I know yep. the person that listens to this podcast and the person that's doing it, that's listening here, like is very successful and very skilled at whatever they do, but they have this imposter syndrome about creating content. And they think that they haven't made it yet or earned the right to create content yet. But I would say it doesn't matter if you're doing an online brand, an online course, syndicating for a fund, uh, doing any type of real estate, uh, it will help you. Okay, mm -hmm. A, first and foremost. B, the reason that you're not doing it is because you're scared of rejection, fear of failure, all the normal occurrences, correct? So what changed for me was I had a GoPro, Mike Ayala, I was golfing with, and he said, dude, um, you should start a podcast. I said, not until I have 100 units. And he <laughs> goes... Oh, well, where did you pull that from? I go, I don't really know, you know? And he goes, oh, okay, cool. So that's the most selfish thing I've ever heard. It's like selfish. How is that selfish? And he goes, you're letting your fear of failure and fear of rejection and your own ego deny people access to information purely off of your own fear. Mm. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Complete reframe. So if you're not posting content, you're being selfish. You are denying the rest of the world access to information that you already have. And you're, you're refusing to let your light shine, you know, as much as it should. And some people like attention more than others. But I think there's just I wake up every day now and I came to the realization that every single day and everything I do in my business directly helps other people at scale every mm -hmm. day. Millions of people. And it's amazing. Like, what more could I ask for than that? We're going to dive in. I have just a couple follow-up questions on podcasting because, again, this is what I geek out on. There's people that listen that are interested in this stuff, but then we'll talk to more brand and, and impact and, and long-term plan and all that good stuff. But sure. you do five days a week. Was that always from Was that from the beginning? Did you build to that? Why five days a week? Just curious what your, what your, your advice is or thoughts are on frequency of episodes being released. 
Yeah, you know, uh, Joe Fairless uh, that did the best ever real estate podcast. Now he's a massive syndicator. You can kind of look to him. So he started with like a five or seven day podcast and somebody asked him and said, hey, if you could go back, what would you do? And he goes, well, I'll do it differently. He's like, I'll do double, you know, because here's the reality of the situation. When you have a podcast, uh, you're fighting for attention daily. You have to show up daily. And look, if somebody, yeah, if you're starting a podcast, start once a week. That's okay. Do that. But then I did two episodes a week to begin. And then I started making a short episode that was sharing like a little bite-sized tidbit in between. And then I saw a dip in my downloads when the two anchor days that I wasn't posting. And I was just like, you know, how much, how much extra effort would it take for me to just do two 10 minute videos, you know, or 10 minute podcast episodes sharing random little tips. So I don't do five episodes a week, like five interviews. I do two interviews interviews and then three, three, like tidbits like bite solo pieces. solo episodes right Short, yeah yeah and so a it shares my story b it establishes credibility and like an, a vulnerability and a connection with the audience because they get to know me as a person and that comes from brandon turner because he told me people don't care that i'm in hawaii because i'm in hawaii they care right. because they were following me when i was living you know and wherever he was before he's like That's i hated cool. it yeah and he goes and they watched me throughout my journey now they care that i'm in hawaii because of that so I document every part of my journey, and that's where that exists. And from a technical point of view, if you're showing up at the top of the podcast player every single day, people are going to check out, and they're going to listen to that episode or one of the episodes you posted before. So it's like if you're not posting, you're not at the top of the player. You know, somebody's going to be – podcast listeners listen to podcasts every day. Yeah. So they're going to start scrolling and say, okay, well, you know, Tribe Millionaires isn't posted. Who else has? And then yeah. they're going to go see. Let me ask you this. I post, I started a second episode recently, a, a member episode Tuesday. So that's actually what this is going to be. So we had the Friday episode. It's always been there. Then we added the Tuesday episode. Actually, it's funny. We had it, removed it, re-added it. And we saw a dip. Uh, our listenership dipped. Actually, just today, I'm looking like, okay, I think we're back to where we were before, right? But but it mm-hmm. dipped. Theories? Like somebody, somebody said seasonality. Maybe it's like retraining the listener. But what do you think like this far into it? Because we're not, we're not small. We're not new, right? We're, we're one, one and a half percent. We bounce between the two. Um, yeah. So what is the, what is the, what, just any theories? I'm curious, like any theories on why we might've dipped when we added that second episode at this point? Oh, I mean, it's just people getting back used, like used right? to it. I, yeah. That's what and I also think. seasonality, yeah. like you added this, the second episode in July when everyone's traveling. Nobody's listening. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so yeah. it's just like, that's why I'm excited for the fall. Like the reason Me that too. mine is spiking and growing like it is, is because I'm getting 4.5 million views organically a month yeah. now. And I get like hundreds of people listening per week that are brand new. So that's why mine's spiking right now. But it's just like, if it was just normal again, yeah, I'd be down. It's funny when you look at, but people have to, I think you have to understand people hear like number of downloads a month. It's like, oh, that's per episode. It's like, no, what's incredible about podcasting is the omnipresence of it. Like mm-hmm. if you were to, if, if I were to look by the hour, no bullshit and you, you even more, but if you look by the hour, we use anchor or, or, or Spotify for podcasters. That's kind of, I don't know if you use uh, uh Libsyn or whatever you use, but if you look by the hour, like go in, scroll your listeners next hour, scroll again, like go, go back like 30, 40 episodes. The numbers move on all of them. There's more people yeah. listening to, like you said, they're, they're not just like listening to this episode and all these episodes. Oh, that's their listenership. Like it they constantly grows, right? People go back and they listen to more. What about mm-hmm. guests? So you, you have like, do you ever, is there an out of bounds guest for you? Guest type? Is there a type of guest that you think just does not fit your show? An author of a fiction book or I don't know. I'm kind of curious how you're, you know, you're about entrepreneurship. You're about, you know, uh, self-actualization, you know, taking action, obviously. Are there guests that are out of bounds for you? Like, I just do what I'm interested in. And right? like, that's just, that's just what I do now. It's like, okay, look, my show has one point. Like my show is to help people, you know, use passive income to create massive impact. Yeah. Like that's where the show takes people. It takes you from working a job you hate to living a life you love. Yeah. So if each episode does not accomplish that goal, I have failed as a podcast host. So it's just like, I just put that filter through everything. Now, because of that, you know, the filter is, are most of the guests are millionaires, seven mm-hmm. to seven to 10 figure. So I want them to a, like have done the thing B they need to live a lifestyle that I admire and I respect the audio has to match the video. So they need to be doing what they say and they need to not be on their fourth marriage you know, doing a bunch of cocaine and hookers while they've got millions of dollars, like that's not a culture fit. And then 
at the end of the day, it's like, I also kind of look for people that are on the podcast circuit now, because mm. it's very difficult to interview somebody that doesn't do any podcasts, because it's, it's hard to get like, the nuggets out of them, unless you know, but sometimes you have a huge person, and it, it, that's okay. But um, now it's the show's to a point now where I can get people that are just polished people in the beginning you just have it's to fun. go to your friends yeah and then after that then you could start branching out and now it's to a point where i can just about email or dm anyone and within a certain frame of time i can get them the, the early just, episodes though teach you how to teach you how to navigate the like you're right like when i do the go abundance guy episodes the reason i put questions in place like i'm going to run through them with you but it's going to be like the last thing we do but because mm -hmm. you are somebody that i can i can just like open like wind up and let go and there's value you've, you've been on this uh, you've done this long right. enough but uh, some of the go abundance guys now and especially early on when you don't get the to attract bigger names like you do learn as a host like when do i incorporate more of me here when do i just get out of the way right like some guests you just like one question like you right but then other times you have to have some conversation so you do learn from those but you're right the bigger guests that are on point man it's a lot of fun how many mm -hmm. in the can episodes do you have like how far ahead do you record i've always been curious about that how how oh, far out Lord. is are you releasing <laughs> yeah you know, y'all aren't gonna like this one dude i fly by the seat of my pants it yeah depends like I wish there was structure to it. There isn't. It's just me. Yeah. So like, there's no, there's no structure because I just, how much I like the episode, you know, if I record an episode and I'm like, wow, that's a banger episode. I may throw it up tomorrow. Same. You know? Yeah. Same. And if it's, if it's an episode where I'm like, eh, let me, let me ice that for a month and come back to it, you know? Yeah. And so it's just, it's just dependent because like, there's a couple of things that make an awesome podcast interview. You know, I'm looking for a couple key things, like how well can they articulate like if I'm pushing them in a direction, are they flowing with me in that direction? Or are they just like going into left field and talk about cows grazing in a pasture? Right. So I'm like, all right, like how well can you articulate and take the the scientific and make it simple? Right. Yeah. So it's like my job as a podcast host is a bridge between the complex and the simple. Like, how can I describe this to like some like I want to be able to describe something complex to a fifth grader? Like, that's my goal. And it's like if I can accomplish that, then, you know, everyone wins. Right. Yeah. So it's it, for me right now, I'm flying by the seat of my pants because I've been traveling. But normally I'll do uh, three interviews a week. Um, so I'll do it'll be two for the show and then one in the hopper. So when I'm in my cadence, I'm about 30 days out. OK, yeah, I feel like I'm getting too far out. That's why I was kind of curious, too. Like I'm, I'm right now as we record in August, I think we're 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 recorded through like November. Or December at this point. Oh no, like, dude! I couldn't even imagine that. I'd forget the interview existed. I do like eight to ten interviews a week. It's uh, that sounds you know, some awful. Of them are, some of, <laughs> some of them go but to your point, like I move up. Some of them I recorded a while ago. They get bumped back and bumped. Like Benjamin Hardy released today on our on our platform yeah. as we're recording this. I mean, I recorded him. I don't know, three weeks ago. Whereas I've yeah. got people I recorded four months ago that are like two months from now. They're good episodes, but they just don't. They don't hit me the same. Well, I'll only do one podcast episode a day. And like, I'll get, I'll guest on one and I'll host one like per yeah. day. And then that's yeah. all I'll do. Because besides that, like, I don't take, I don't take any calls in the morning. The morning is like same. my time to work Eight on to my business. Yep. And then in the afternoon is when I have everything else opened up. And it's just like with the rest of my business, it just demands so much of me. And I'll also, I don't want to be sitting on the last podcast episode before I go into the next. Yeah. So I need to be fully present for that one and locked in. So that's why I do it. I mean, makes sense. Maybe makes sense. maybe in the future I can change it, but for one now, one episode, one episode of Action Academy. Everybody's got to go listen to today. What is it? One. I like David. I like David choose. Osborne still. Yeah. I like David Osborne's because it was it was a cool full circle moment for me because I came to Go Abundance from listening to David on a podcast and then like reaching out to him and then becoming involved with everything. That's what changed my life. And then for me to create a podcast and to host him on there. And it was one of those where I was just in flow. Like mm -hmm. uh, it was my first conversation with him, like in depth and man, we both murdered it. And to this day, like I'll, I'll replay it periodically, wow. but a uh, hundred million dollar advice on health, wealth, and self. Love that one. Uh, is there a one a, what do you mean? Like a second one? Like, yeah, Osborne's one, but like right behind it, I would recommend this one of yours there's a lot that are close second um i really liked um let's see brian moran 12 week year was really mm. good i really liked that one 
my friend Logan Rankin has one that was like, he's got like $150 million in multifamily and he broke it down really analytically how he got there. Mm. That one was very popular. Cameron Harold vivid vision was very popular. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's just so many that are fantastic yeah. that I, I really enjoyed doing it. It just becomes easier and easier and easier as time goes on. True. So like, babies. that's what I think about when it comes to business or anything. I'm, I'm just like, what can I do that compounds on itself and becomes easier over time? Your mission is to free a million people from the corporate grind, from the W-2. Am I correct on that? Yep. And two, I've got two more years. Do you, what is the, you got two more. Oh, it's within a certain time frame. I didn't know that. Three years. Three years to free a million people from the daily grind. What is the, what is step one, two, three for people to get themselves out from your perspective of the W-2? So step one, create your vision. Mm -hmm. So three, your vision. So everyone skips over that part and they act like that's not the, it's so true. Correct order. Yeah. But everyone focuses so much on the how. And then I can really break that frame really, really easily because mm -hmm. everyone's like, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do that. And then I'll go Google like a, I'll just Google it in front of them. And I'll say, here, like, here's the free YouTube video or I'll send them a podcast episode that I did. I'm like, here, here's the how. The how exists. Like any how that you want, like it exists. If you want to learn how to do Japanese woodworking, you can go figure it out on YouTube like today. Mm -hmm. Um, so the how's never been the problem. Uh, it's the wrong question to ask. The right question to ask is where and who, right? So I we like start that. with the where. So nobody has any idea of what's going on because they have no idea where they're going or what they actually want, right? So I heard this quote the other day that I really loved, and it is, uh, depression is caused by a lack of optionality, and anxiety is caused by an overabundance of optionality. So clearly, most people are actually more anxious than they are depressed because there's just too many options. They're standing at the base of a mountain and they see 30 different paths to go up the mountain and they don't know which one they should pick. So therefore they pick none and they sit on the bench and they wait. Um, so the best way to overcome anxiety is clarity. And you don't have clarity unless you create your vision. So the vision is what dictates everything. So that's where I would say for everyone to start. Smart. Um, so that's where, number two is who. So once you understand where you're going and uh, both professionally and personally. So where do you want to go as like financially with your business in your investing career? And then who do you want to become as a person? What character traits does that person possess? So I always ask myself, what does eight figure Brian look like? What's mm. that guy doing? You know, like, how is he operating his business? Like, what questions is he asking? What is he stressed about? What does he realize that isn't important? Right. And so I bring that guy into today so that I can operate my business in that perspective to where then the eight figures is just an inevitability. Right. So it's just like, for me, I tell people, not only do you, if you decide multifamily is going to be your preferred vehicle of choice, right. Then cool. Then not only do you want to have somebody that as your mentor, which is the next point to, to uh, number two, who you don't want just a mentor that does multifamily. You want a multifamily mentor that has a strong marriage, has strong, like faith, belief, whatever you, you know, correlate with mm -hmm. their impeachable character. They have great work-life balance. So you look for all of these things and then your reticular activating system fires off in your brain, which is, you know, if you go buy a new car, you see that new car everywhere on the road, it's your brain's filtering system. And now you start seeing that mentor pop up. And then when you see him, you're like, that's the person, that's the who. So A, step one, create your vision. Step two, find your who's, which is your peers, partners, and mentors. And like I said, get in the arena, do the things, document them, post them yeah. online. You will find your people fast. All right. If you just True. post about what you're doing and you serve as a beacon and like a lighthouse in the harbor, the ships will come. And then step three is just the execution and consistency. So at that point, I would say uh, before the how, I would say establishing your relationship with failure and realizing that failure is an inevitability. It's not a probability. It's an inevitability and being OK with that and learning to love the actual process instead of the result. So vision your who's, and then falling in love with the process because you will become financially free if you're if you have a strong vision, if you're around the right people, it's inevitable, probably mm -hmm. within three years. I strongly believe anyone can go from zero to financially free within three year period. I really believe it. And so after that, you'll hit it and you'll realize none of it ever mattered at all. <laughs> and then you realize that life doesn't you like this is the finish line is financial freedom. But the reality is it's the starting line. It's just everyone is behind go on the monopoly board and life starts at the financial freedom point. 
because then you can start really going into what actually matters, stuff that actually matters. The money never mattered. It's just in the way of everything else. What matters for you? Relationships. Because people say time is the ultimate currency, right? But I would argue that if you had all the time in the world, which I've had, I hit financial freedom, left my corporate job in March of 2022, went and traveled around the world full time for eight months, lost a relationship, was on my own. I had all the time in the world, but I had no one to share it with. Mm. So I'm in Brazil in this floor to ceiling glass window house, looking out at the sunset, most beautiful view, most beautiful location, no one to share it with, no one to have a beer with, no one speaking my language, right? So relationships are the most important currency to me. They're the most valuable thing. And there's been studies done that show like longevity. They interviewed, you know, they did the Harvard happiness study. And they say they follow these people for 75 years now. And they said, like, what are the, you know, the predicators of happiness? Like, who is still happy after graduation, like, and through their lives? And it was just the strength of relationships was one of the biggest dictators of how happy and, and fulfilled your life was. So for me, now that I don't really necessarily think about money, it's more so just a game to me that I play. Now I'm thinking about how do I develop like the most deep, meaningful, fulfilling relationships with long-term people that I can maintain, you know, for the remainder of my life that compound on themselves. And so like, that's what I seek every single day. So that, and then impacting others. Mm -hmm. So like, that's where the impact and fulfillment piece come in. So I'm like, how can I go from me to we, and just like really create a ripple effect on the world that is very meaningful? That's what I care about. When, since leaving your job, what is the biggest thing you count as a failure? As a failure. Yeah. What's the failure? You said it because you're right. There's inevitability. And it's not always like crash and burn failure, but you're spot on, man. Like failure could be like I talked about. Oh, we added a show and we dipped in listenership, you know, or, mm -hmm. or whatever. You know, I screwed something up. We didn't sell this event out. There's so many different ways you quote unquote fail. But for you, what, what would you say in your entrepreneurial career right now has been a failure that stands out? Not again, don't need catastrophe, but just a failure that stands out. No, I've got a good one. Um, when you hit the goal that you've been trying to hit, like and given everything that you've got towards, thinking that that will be the answer. What do you mean by that? And it, and it isn't. So that's technically a failure. So in corporate, you know, I made it to number eight out of 5,079. I won all the awards, sales rep of the year, rookie of the year, rep of the year. I won everything and they were fast tracking me to be vice president of sales. And then I realized that it was awful. I was like, okay, I just hit the goal. And like the mountaintop is not as sweet as I thought it was. Yeah. Then I hit millionaire status. I thought like confetti and like a four piece band was going to play in the backseat of my car. <laughs> Nothing happened. And then, you know, I hit financial freedom. I had enough passive income coming in, enough income coming through my podcast that I didn't have to work anymore. And I could travel around the world. And I did that. And then I was like, why am I depressed? So I guess the failure was in the assumption that the answer to happiness was found in the mountaintop moments. Mm. It's not. It's found in the climb up the mountain yeah. because the mountain range never ends. So you make it to the mountain peak and then you just see the rest of the range that's so much higher and it never ends. So you hit your first million, you go to 10, then you go to 10, then you go to 25, then you go to 50, then you go to 100, you get a 10 person business, that's 100, then it's 1000, then, okay, now I'm in EOS. Now, now I'm in EO. Okay, cool. My EO buddies have 2000. Like, it's a comparison game. Mm -hmm. So it's the building process. It's, it's, and it's the climb. That's the fun. That's the fulfillment. That's happiness is doing the thing shooting the free throws, like Kobe, like Mamba mentality. It's posting yeah. the podcast episode. It's sending the offer in. It's analyzing the deal. It's making the cold call. Like the moments, the little moments between the big moments of life are where like 99.9% .9 of life exists. I love and that's that. where I, and that's where I like to find my happiness now is I'm like, okay. okay, today I did what I was supposed to do. I won today. I won happiness. I won life. Tomorrow is a new life. Tomorrow's new happiness. Cool. I'll take it on tomorrow. Every single day. Every single day. I love your point about uh, asking eight figure Brian, you know, what you should do today. I think that's brilliant. Hey everyone. Thanks for listening. I hope you're getting tremendous value. I want to make sure that with this information, you have a way in which you can integrate it into your life. Best way to do that is being a member of any of our GoBundance communities. Just go to GoBundance.com, submit your application. No matter your net worth, we've got the community for you. Back to the show.
what in your business or how is your business structured such, so, you know, today, what have you done? What have you implemented? That's a direct reflection of the conversation you had with eight figure Brian. Yeah. So hiring a coach, um, Mm -hmm. that was way more expensive than I was comfortable with. So I've got him, I basically seller financed my coach. So he's like, what do you mean you sell? (laughs) What does that mean? You seller financed your coach? Because he was fifty thousand dollars. So any for people that don't have a business coach yet, like twenty five thousand dollars is kind of your like bottom end point. of the totem pole of yeah. business coach, like because they directly impact revenue. So they're going to be twenty five thousand dollars to fifty thousand dollars. And like I had it, but I was like, man, like spending fifty thousand dollars right now would really put me in scarcity. I was like, I don't like that at all because I don't have no reserves. Like yeah. uh, so. I was like, I'll make you an offer. Like you're betting on the jockey, not the horse, right? So my goal is a million dollar business this year. So how about I just pay you 10% of top line revenue up to a million? You know, so may hopefully it happens this calendar year and then we'll bake in a bonus if it does happen because then our interests are aligned. But then if it doesn't, like we just keep going, you get 10% of my gross revenue until we hit a million. So now you make a hundred thousand. I'm paying you double Mm. spread out and our interests are aligned. So that's what we did. And nice. so I pay him 10% of top line revenue quarterly. Look and he has you. incentives and he has incentives um, for performance. So it's like, he is directly trying to grow my business alongside with me because then he gets bonuses. Master negotiator. What else? What else is in, in place for, uh, for, for eight figure Brian from eight figure Brian's org advice? chart, org chart, org chart. hiring, Interesting. hiring yeah. team, delegation, all these things I'm unfamiliar with. Yeah. Um, like, because me, me doing it is not big enough. Like it needs to be we, and it needs to go from I do to we do to they do. So right now it's a we do. So we're in the trenches together and it's me building out team. It's me building out systems. It's me building out processes. If something gets done twice, how do we document that and have that in our system? So that's repeatable for somebody else to come in and plug in. So how do we, you know, systematize, how do we create, create SOPs for onboarding, for fulfillment for the first 30 days? I'm looking at metrics, like my KPIs, like my biggest KPI that I track my business is TTV, time to value. So how fast can we get somebody what I call an HSM, a holy shit moment? Like, that's what I want. How fast can we get someone to holy shit within joining my business? So, mm. um, and so we track all of that. Like that's a serious metric that we track with my team and my business. And then I have three different stages uh, that I take a customer through, which is like aversion, conversion, immersion. So I'm like, okay, so through each one of these phases, we have KPIs, we have SOPs that are easily trackable, followable, and documenting like each position in the org chart, like how do we win this week? Quantifiably, how do we win this week? And building out my org chart for today, for the end of the year, and for three years from now, like what positions are in that org chart? So it's like the EOS model um, in traction. So you're going and you're putting each seat and you begin with the seat and you begin with the vision for the seat. And then you put their quantifiable KPIs and you determine how does that seat win? And then you go and you put your name in each of one of the seats. And mm. so you can show yourself, okay, like this is what I have to do today. And this is like, I have to work in the business right here. But like now you can begin to see where the pieces are. And then you can start carving out revenue for each one of those seats. And then that's where you can really start finding the rock stars because you're really clear about where you're heading. So it's like, I've got a 19 person team already created for 2025 that I'm already thinking of filling today. Hmm. So it's just like building the team and the systems. Like that's not, that's not what I would have thought about before. I would have just been like, how do I grind and be on enough calls to make a million bucks in a year? Yeah, no, that makes sense. So, all right. So you're building, uh, that's incredible. Do you, so this is something we share. We both talk a lot about, we both had the exit from corporate America where, you know, different married kids, old dude, young, good looking, well-spoken dude like you, you know, so we're different in that regard, but the, the, uh, the, the message is similar in that, you know, yeah, I mean, I have this, I did this silly reel with you before we started, just like, I get so into like trying to get people around the idea that you don't need to be stuck in a W2 and whatever. Mm -hmm. Do you have any sense of how long you're able to stay tied to that as your brand? Is it three years, million people out, and then you move on? Does that feel like it might get tired for you? And I'm I'm probably projecting and asking uh, asking this. Is this is this a topic that you feel passionate about that you could see in five or ten years? You're still building a business around around you know helping people get free to the nine to free of the nine to five. Great question. So um, no, 
which is why I, I'm building it into its own thing. It's not the mm -hmm. Brian Lubin show. It's Action Academy, right? right? And I'm building it as not Brian Lubin's podcast. I'm building it as the Action Academy. So if there ever comes a point where it's like, okay, cool. Like I look at what Joe Fairless and Brandon Turner do, and that's who yeah. I follow, right? Yeah. So it's like, realistically, I can send an email out right now to the people that I'm already know that know, like, and trust me and probably raise $10 million. Yep. I wholeheartedly believe that. But it's just like, it's not to the point yet of time where that is ready. Like that will be down the road. And so what I do is like, if you, the lar larger the runway that you create before you make an ask, the bigger your ask can be. So for me, instead of having like one year of relationship capital, I'd rather have three years of relationship capital, you know, before I make the ask. And then I'll start, like, I'll do exactly what Brandon did. And I'll start partnering with like the best and the brightest operators in real estate. And then I'll start probably a massive, massive commercial or multifamily fund. And then we'll start going down that road. Right. So like for me, it's like, what is 40 year old Brian still doing this? Is 45 year old Brian still doing this? Right. Like right. talking about like leaving your job and everything. So Action Academy will still exist, but will I be the one actively running it? No. Now to add to that as a as an addition, um, I also came to a very fast realization within my brand that uh, my end destination, my um, what do they call it? It's like uh, QER, my quantifiable end result was incorrect with my, within my business. So the mastermind exists to get people out of their jobs within six to 12 months. That's what it began as. Then I realized this is too short-sighted. This isn't what we want. The actual result we want is three steps. So passive income, step one, let's get you out of your job. So now that makes it way more, the relationship changes with the consumer and with the customer. They're like, okay, this isn't the end destination. This is an expected step one that yeah. I get out of my job. because It's happening fast, faster than we anticipated. Yeah. For some, um, step two, let's build your business. So now let's create like in the, what I call passionate income, which is like Brandon Turner had his birthing. Me, yeah. it's passionate income, man. That is what I wrote my book about. That's like that's why I wrote the book. That's why yeah. everything I'm about is passionate income. So it's like going from passive to passionate because we're not supposed to just retire and lay on a beach and do nothing. We're supposed that's to hit true. financial freedom so that you can go do what you love to do. Yeah. And the Japanese call it your ikigai, which is the intersection between what the market wants, what you're good at, what you can make money at, and what you love. So finding that is your ikigai, which is your purpose in life. So let's get everyone free from their job. Let's get everyone making revenue within their purpose, their ikigai, building passionate income, get that up to 1 million to 3 million per year. And then it's massive impact. Now that person is impacting their communities, their team, their family, their uh, the world at large. So that's why now the goal of Action Academy is to take people from passive income to massive impact. So now it's a it's a larger journey that we can all go on together longer as opposed to a uh, transactional, I left my job, do you guys serve me anymore? So that's where that's where we're at. I love it, man. I love it. You're dialed in, dialed in on the messaging, dialed in. Well, on I'm also and you're also catching me at the last day of a month and a half long trip in Europe where I spent the la every waking hour trying to think about this stuff. <laughs> well, I, I, I was going to actually pivot to that before we wrap up with the kind of the a fire round of the questions. But you you traveled eight months. I You know, you, you documented it, man, like uh, incredible like everything, your journey. I always tell that to people like don't create content, document your journey, document what you're mm -hmm. doing. Doc, right. So you did that. You're the great example example of that. Everybody should go follow you and see that your relationship fell apart that you've mentioned. You've talked about, you came back to Atlanta, you end up moving over to Austin. I got to meet you and Cody there recently, which was fun. Uh, but it feels like now you've kind of re-engaged on the whole, like the world traveler itch kind of, kind of got had to get scratched again. Talk about that. Why now? How long? What's the purpose? Is it just because you felt like it? Give me a little bit more on the world travel at this point. You're in Zurich right now and, and what your plans are. Yeah, you know, right now we're on the tail end of the greatest month of my life, and I was riddled with business business anxiety through it. So I'm glad I came to Switzerland to slow down enough to like sit in the moment, because in July I flew out to Ibiza. I was in Ibiza for a week, and then I went and did Croatia Yacht Week. So then I was on living on a boat, island hopping through Croatia for a week. Then I went to Montenegro, and I went to Dubrovnik, and then I went to Istanbul. Didn't get a hair transplant yet. Later. 
Um, I have to be in a relationship first because I'll be ugly for six months afterwards. <laughs> uh, and then I went to Italy, got a tattoo of the Coliseum across yeah. from the Coliseum. And then I flew to do a road trip in Switzerland for a week and a half. So it's been a hell of a month. Yeah. Um, there's no rhyme and reason to it. Whenever I get a download, I call them downloads. I just act on them. Mm. So, you know, I am religious, so I'm Christian. So, you know, I believe in God and everything, but you can call it God, you can call it universe, whatever you want. Whenever you have that moment where it's just like, I need to do this, you just go do it. There's a reason that you're getting that. I call it a download because it just pops into your brain and you can't stop thinking about it. So for me, I saw Yacht Week pop up. I was like seven days living on a boat, drinking every day. I was like, I'm past that. I'm too old for that. But I've said that every year for the last four years. I've been looking at that since I was 24. Right, and right. look, the reason I travel and the reason I do what I do, and I probably spent twenty, thirty thousand dollars this month in July, which is not sustainable. It's stupid to do on paper. But here's the reality of the situation. It's all about seasons of life. So I can zoom out and I could see my life and recognize that right now is the time for me to do this stuff. How many people do we know that say, damn it, I wish that I would have taken that window of opportunity and really single 25. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gunned yep. it, right. Yep. So it's like, I recognize that I'm very ready to settle down, get married, have children. Then I recognize that there's a 10 year window after that, where that's going to be my entire existence. Mm -hmm. Nothing else will matter besides raising those young kids and being with my wife and creating the family. And then it's different types of debt. Now you have a $10,000 mortgage, right? Mm -hmm. So now you have private school. I understand all of that. And that is all coming. And I'm not always going to be able to hop on a freaking boat and go around Croatia. So I'm taking advantage of the season of life right now. And I'm just like, okay, cool. Like, let me gun it right now while I've got it. And then begin the next adventure. So Incredible. last time I did, last time I did eight months, uh, never do that again. Um, so I did one month and my rule is I come home whenever I'm, whenever I dictate my business, my business doesn't dictate me. Mm. So two weeks ago, my business almost dictated me to come home. My business was slapping me around and said, you little bitch, come home. Like, what are you doing? Traveling. They're like, no, you belong to me. You come home. You focus on me. You give me attention. I was like, no, 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 no. I have my business built around my life. Like, I don't have my life built around my business. And mm -hmm. so I was on the phone with my coach. I'm like, I can't go home yet. I'm not going to let this business defeat me. And then I was like, okay, there's two ways I can approach this. I can approach this as scarcity or abundance. The same, I'm going to take the same actions regardless. I get to choose which frame in which I take those actions. So I chose abundance. And then in one day, I made up the entire month's worth of revenue. Oops, right? <laughs> Just on a Friday. It was like $27,000 on a Friday. Isn't that funny how recurring that Recurring revenue. Yeah. And I was just like, that's how it happens. Mm. Um, so then I went to Switzerland and I came here and I calmed down. I had a couple of weeks in between. And now it's, I want to come home. And then it's such a difference between I need to go home and the fires are burning to I want to come home. I feel relaxed, recharged, refreshed. Now I'm ready to come home and give my business what it deserves because I want to. So now I'm heading Love back it. to Austin on Saturday, tomorrow morning. Nice. Nice. The, uh, you said about, um, real quick, I I'm curious, is there anything that you do specifically tactically to tune into what did you call it? Um, uh, the moment where you hear something that tells you to go you download, download, is there anything that you do, uh, to make sure that you're always tuned into or hearing these downloads as they pop up? You just have to slow down. Yeah. You, you talk about it too. It's the same thing as when you're driving in your car and when you're off on your own weekend and you're just yep. driving and then all of a sudden your, your mind is still and then it just pops. So that's why I don't do any calls in the morning. Um, yep. So in the morning, it's just is me time. It's my creative work. It's my time to think, to consume, to train, to work on me, to go to the gym. Like, so I can be the best Brian that shows up in the afternoon when it comes to my business. So it's like, those are the times that it comes and I just finished a 70,000 word book that's in editing right now. And it's like, I woke up in the middle of the night at 4 a.m. And I was like, I got to write this book because every single day, every single time I did an interview with an entrepreneur that I really admired, I would talk about passionate income and they'd say, oh my God, dude, I've got goosebumps. And everything kept happening over and over and over again. And then I had like Amy Porterfield on my podcast and yeah. she was like, oh my God, I got goosebumps. I was like, Amy fucking Porterfield just told me she got goosebumps. I was like, I need to write this freaking book. And I woke up the next morning and I said, it's time to start writing a book. I didn't do any fucking research on how to write a book. 
I just started writing. I wrote 70,000 words in 30 days. It was what I spent every single waking hour of my life doing. I'd wake up at 6 a.m., I'd start writing, and then I'd go to bed. Whenever I went to bed, I'd wake up, I'd start writing again. And then now here, I edited it seven times. Now I send it to be professionally edited. So now it's the eighth edit. Um, <laughs> so it'll be ready like November, December. Incredible, so, man. Incredible. I'll call in every favor I've ever had. So that's when I'll call in my four years of relationship capital. So my goal, I've got a list of like 8,000 people that I know personally that I'm going to be sending text messages to. And a lot of you are listening to this podcast right now. So buckle up. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. All right, let's do these questions quick. We have six pillars in GoBundance, bucket list adventure, horizontal income, age-defying health, genuine contribution, authentic relationships, and extreme accountability. Which one of those six are you crushing it in right now? Um, I you all want me to say bucket list adventure, but I won't say that. I'll say authentic relationship because, um, man, I I show up as me everywhere. And I've noticed over the time, over a lot of time, like I just had lunch with Mike McCarthy, who's a good friend of both of ours, one of the founders of GoBundance, which all you know, Mike, um, here in Zurich of all places. And he texted me and he was like, Let's go uh, meet up for lunch with my son. He's like, let's go hang out before FIFA. And here's what I truly believe. Me and Mike haven't really talked about business too much ever, but we've hung out a lot mm -hmm. because we just like each other and we get to know each other as people first. So I meet as the man first and then a friend second, talk business third. Yeah. And so I feel like if more people just led like that, and go Bundes is guilty of this too. Like you'll be at the, you'll be in Tahoe and everyone will come up and they'll be like, Oh, you know, like what asset class are you in? You know, I'm like, let's not start there. Right, <laughs> like, right, right. Yeah. You know, everyone here is loaded. Like we're all, we're all good. Mm -hmm. Like what do I want to have a beer with you first? Right. And then, and then go from that point. And those are the relationships that last the longest. I think, I don't know. It's, Maybe it's I'm wrong. permeated. Man. I had elder Devin elder on the podcast. He brought you up like, Love yeah, him. come down a helicopter down to some land. He brought you up specifically. So, um, I think you're, you oh, are, did he? makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, makes sense. He's like, yeah, Brian Lubin wants to fly out or helicopter down to our land. And you know, he'll yeah. be like, Hey man, let's go. You know, so you're, you're doing what Got some you barbecue. Said. It, there you go. You're doing what you said. You're building those relationships based on the, the being you and being yourself and Businesses third, fourth, fifth, whatever it might be. So I yeah. love that. And which of those pillars could you use more support and or accountability? Oh, contribution. Ah, no, I used to say that. Do I though? No, I would actually change that because now my entire life is contribution. So that's pretty mm -hmm. cool. That's a pretty cool download right there. Because every single thing I do every single day directly Serve impacts yeah. other people at yeah. scale and it compounds. Um so like today, there's like 4 million people that are watching a video and they're going to the podcast and listening to it. Um, I would say the health, the health. It's been a very big anxiety of mine, you know, age-defying health. It's been massive anxiety for me to, like, I've just been one of those person, people that's just terrified of like looking under the hood because I was convinced that I have you know, I don't even say the word. I say the C word. I don't even say it out loud anymore. That's but funny. I'm convinced yeah. at any given moment that I have that and I'm going to die tomorrow. And I thought that I was the only one that thought about that until I was at a Tony Robbins event. And he goes, my life was so good in my 20s that I was convinced that I was going to get a terminal illness and die. Mm. Convinced. And I was like, same. And I walk around with that anxiety every day. Yeah. So I thought if I go get my blood drawn, they're going to say, oh, you've got 40 different diseases. You're dying tomorrow. Mm. And once I started talking about that, then I realized everyone else is thinking the same thing, <laughs> yeah. especially when you have kids, right? Yeah. So they're like, oh my God. And so then, you know, my coach reframed it in my head and he's like, well, look, he's like, what if I told you just like failure is an inevitability? It's like, there's going to be some stuff wrong always. Mm -hmm. He's like, you're whatever levels are going to be high. This is going to be low. It's like, and then we, it's a process and journey of fixing it. And I was like, okay. That makes sense. So now um, that I'm finished with Ibiza and I'm finished with Yacht Week, I'm coming back. I'm probably going to be a super obnoxious biohacker now. So shout out <laughs> Brett Harmeling. Shout out Brett Harmeling. Now, if I'm wearing the the orange glasses, y'all got you guys can slap me around. No, but, you know, I live in Austin, work. Texas. I live in Austin, Texas now. So I think I'm about to be a cold plunging sauna and son of a bitch, man. Like it's going to be a wild ride. 
It's got to be infrared sauna. There's very specific infrared things. sauna. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You wouldn't catch me dead in a wood sauna. It's funny. Quick aside, I put this post in the group about sleep. Like I've I've just been waking up early and um like 3 a.m. and can't get back to sleep. Like you said, it's everything. It's from excitement to anxiety. It's just my brain is going. It's the same right? thing. It's the same right? physiological. It's like excitement and anxiety is the exact same physiological yep. response. Exactly. So I posted it and it's got like 400, not okay, it's like 150 comments on it. And it is, it's like, get the eight sleep this. You got to do that. Have sex, like all these things, right? You know, get a sauna with a cold plunge and honey, honey, look, sex, look at this. We're having so, more kids. <laughs> but then finally somebody said, Hey, uh, before you get sauna, red infrared, you know, uh cold plunge, showers, da 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 da. Um, something's stressing you out. What is it? I'm like, oh yeah, it's kind of these 12 things. Like you said, like, am I yeah. dying right now? My kids, am I doing the right thing as a dad? Is my business yeah. really operating as well? <laughs> like it was funny to get like we have all the hacks and the ways to like, you know prop ourselves to sleep and sleep this way and put this under your putting head. A, putting a Band-Aid on a bullet hole. Exactly. Exactly. That's all of what it was. But there's the bullet holes. And somebody finally called it out. But I just got a text on it today. I posted this like a, a month ago. And somebody just texted me today like, are you looking at your clock first thing in the morning? I'm like, yes, I am. Some days I'm looking at my clock at 3 a.m. That's how I know it's 3 a.m. But other days I'm, I'm still not. I'm still wake up, man. The whole morning routine thing, too. Like, I still wake up and just start scrolling. I'm like, and now, granted, it's not for long, but I'm like, my coach was like, dude, every single time you stop doing that, it works. And yeah. I'm just like, oh, okay. Yeah, it's true. Right. I, I get away from that that miracle morning or whatever. And then yeah. when I get back to it, it does work something. Not even just like the full miracle, but like a meditation yeah. journal workout and then start my day. Something like that. It does work. So anyway, yeah. what area of your life are you potentially flirting with disaster? Flirting with disaster. Um. Okay, so we have age defying health, extreme accountability, genuine. It could be anything. It doesn't have to be a pillar necessarily, just an area and a spot in your life where you feel like you might be my relationship with my family. Interesting. Yeah. It's you want really to expand rough. or leave it there? Um, yeah, no, my my mom, my brother is the opposite of me. So he's 26, never had a job, lives in mom's attic, um, in his childhood room. And every single conversation I've had with my mom for the last 10 years is her bitching about my brother. And every conversation I have with my brother is her, him bitching about my mom. Mm. And so it's just like watching someone for 10 years shoot themselves in the foot and not run out of bullets, right? Wow. And yeah. she just refuses. She thinks she has this belief that money is the root of all evil. And she still has this type of like, she's proud of me, but she's also like, you're getting caught up in all of the, like, you can talk to all the millionaires, but you're not talking to your mom. Even though I tell her, look, every single conversation we have, I want to want to call you, but every mm -hmm. conversation we have is just doom and gloom and everything that's wrong with your life. And so I'm having a fantastic day and I have to calendar block 30 minutes of depression to talk to you. And I tell her that, and she's like, well, one day I'm going to die, Brian. And then you're going to wonder, you know, if you would have talked to me more. And she's like, your brother's going to kill me from stress. And that's the last 10 years. Um, so hey, hey. it's hard when you do the work, but you can't make every, you can't lead a horse to water and make a drink. Right? right. So, and a lot of people in Go Abundance are going through this with family members, especially, and it is rough, you know? I so, love that. By the way, I want to honor you on this. Like when I asked that question, I would say 99%, maybe even all will say something like, uh, you know, I don't know about disaster. It's almost like, I don't want to call it an ego thing. Like, I can't, I'm not going to admit to disaster, but you didn't, you just went after it, man. You know, like, yeah, this is potentially mm -hmm. disastrous for me, you know, like the relationship with family. So I appreciate mm -hmm. that. In what specific way has GoBundance impacted your life? <laughs> man. Just choose one. One. <laughs> one. I got to find a card game question while we're doing that. <sighs> one. One way that GoBundance has impacted my life, man. It has shown me that possible is bullshit. Mm. Possible that like everyone says like practicality that. and possibility is bullshit. Like, because it's just an individual frame of reference. If if I could say if somebody's listening to this, they're thinking about go abundance, it, it take away all the amazing guys and the one-on-one -on -one conversations and the in the heartfelt and the tears and the hugs and like that's just the business help take all that away and just being around people that can casually say, Oh yeah, I'm bringing in 20 million this year. It's down a year. 
oh yeah, you know, I got I got a new helicopter, got a new jet. Yeah, it was it was 15 million, you know, eh, you know, we'll figure it out. And then it's just like, you know, like, and I'm over here stressing about like a hundred thousand, right? And then so like just the belief and being around who I'm around makes me be like, of course I would hit a million dollar ARR in my business in year one. Of yeah. course. And then I interviewed like the biggest business authors in the world, like John Warlow, Walker Dival, uh, and these these guys that literally buy and build businesses. And they're like, most businesses don't make it to 100,000, like 90%. And they're like, and you're talking about a million. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to hit it. And it's just because we're dumb enough to believe we can. Yeah. So that's good. Nobody, nobody said you can't. Nobody said you can't. What's Besides one you. bit of it? I'm sorry. Besides you. Like Besides you, you tell you, you can't. Yep. 100%. Uh, what advice would you give to a new or prospective m- member of Eagle Abundance community? Um, focus on the give and you'll receive more than focusing on the take. If you focus on the give, you'll receive 10 times more than if you come in and you're like, what is this going to do for me? How many calls are you guys hosting? You know, how are you going to best help me? Like, do you have people that do multifamily in Fresno? Cause that's where <laughs> I'm investing. You know, it's just like, if instead you could be like, man, I want to be around awesome people and just help as much as I can. You will have your cup flow, man. And it's still an issue with some GoBundance members when they join is they're in that taker, you know, mentality. What am I getting? But, uh, What's happening? Yeah. What am I getting? Where's what the am return? I getting? What am I yeah. getting? I just spent $12,000. Like what? A, huh, what's my ROI here? Yeah. And then as soon as you're like, yo, dude, you have that problem. Let me help you with that. And then all of a sudden they come back 10, like, 10 months later and they're your capital partner on 5 million for your raise. Mm. Yeah. You're known as a giver. You get way more, man. Like you're like the, you're like the, uh, the more clear and succinct version of thoughts in my head. Like you say, it's like, that's perfect. (laughs) That was a perfect line. That's absolutely well said. So, all right. Last question from the GoBundance card game. It's the eight of diamonds. What bucket list item are you excited to cross off next? Oh, that's a good one. (laughs) <laughs> I know exactly what it is. It's juicy. So my grandfather uh, was like a dad to me and he went to the Kentucky Derby for every bit of 20, 30 years. He wow. always had a suite. He was a big sales rep and, he, and the co- CEO of the company would always take him to get him and Nana to go uh, to a suite in Kentucky Derby. And I never went, I lived in Louisville when I was young, but I never went to Kentucky Derby. And when he died, he, he looked at me and he said, bury me somewhere fucking cool. And so he said, put my ashes somewhere cool. And he told me and my mom that. And we we're like, okay. So when he died, we went to Churchill Downs. We scattered him in the winter circle of the Kentucky Derby, Churchill Downs. You could do so, that? Yes. Wow. We asked. Yeah. They didn't know you could do it, but they made an exception. So we, his ashes were scattered in the winter circle of Churchill Downs. And that was every bit of probably seven years ago. Mm. And I still to this day have not been to the Kentucky Derby. I've not been back. Because every year I say the same thing. It's not the money thing it's a logistics thing because it's so small and it's so difficult to get lodging and transportation you're like how do i get there and it's probably going to rain half the time so my big bucket list thing is i want a fucking suite at the kentucky derby it's we have already researched it me and my coach about thirty thousand dollars i want to buy the suite yeah and i want to have me and my fiance or my significant other like we're there and i want to have like a beautiful woman and like the big like hats and everything and i'm madly in love and i want to have like all my friends around me with their wives and everything and we're all there like in the suite at the kentucky derby and that's how i want to experience it for the first time so it's going to be thirty thousand dollars and i also have to fall in love so just like timeline here clock's ticking ryan luba man third time's the charm i'm glad we i'm glad we got it done this time let everybody know where to find you where to follow you where to what to listen for go for it yeah so just brian lubin just everywhere um, I'm the least hireable person on the internet. So if you go Google me, uh, I will never have a job ever again in my life. Cause the Dude, first not being, not being funny, but that's a, that's a byproduct of having a brand around quitting your job or, or, uh, you know, like, yeah, I realized you know, the, the ships were burned a long time ago. Yeah. I was like, if the first 200 are like different ways of leaving your job. So I'm never going to get hired again. <laughs> um, so yeah, Brian Lubin action Academy podcast every single yeah. day. Um, I think we've promoted it enough and then we've got the community, I'd say go listen to some episodes of the podcast. If you listen to four or five episodes and you're jiving with the guest and you're jiving with the message, then maybe check out the community, but check out the podcast. Oh, and then if, when this releases, I'll probably have a freaking book out coming here soon. So I'm going to really, uh, I'm moving this up, dude. Sorry. So check I'm moving for this that, up. Yeah. 
Okay, okay. Well, then in a couple of months, I'm going to have a book coming out and I'm going to text everyone that I know. And all of you are going to be like, oh my God, hey, what's up? Hey, that favor that I've been waiting to cash for three years. Here it is. Here it is. And we're going to, yeah. So that's how we're going to get in front of, uh, I need to get in front of 100 million people to have conversations with 10 million to change 1 million. So that's how we're going to do it. Beautiful. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you. Thank you.